Boom, boom. How's going? How's going? It is I again, your boy, TJ Tarai Jack. And today on M5 Successful Friends, I've got another friend of the M5 who is doing amazingly things. And I call him the traveler. Well, he calls himself the traveler. And I got to also know why he calls himself the traveler. But let's bring him on. Hi, uh, Vile, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks, TJ. And you? Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Is it Willy, Vili? Which one goes? I would prefer Willy. Awesome stuff, right. So is it Willy for William or Willy for just Willy? Well, it's Willy for William, but not Willy for William. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff, awesome stuff. It's good having you around, my brother. Um, you grind in the same space with me in property, but you do something else that's totally different. Uh, and Willie, uh, the full name is Willie uh, Kalala. Wow. And uh, what does Kalala mean? That, that's a bit of a fascinating name there. Well, remember, we are all uh, African. Whenever right. your parents decide to name you, they yeah. name you after whether it can be an event, whether it yeah. can be another person. But Kalala yeah. means a boy. It's really Kalala Ngalula, a boy right. that is born after four girls. All right. All right. Yes, exactly. So, so I was born after four girls. Then I was given that name. Okay. Interesting. Um, I remember when I used to travel in West Africa um, and the guys, they, they are given names. So, you know, you, you, you see Kwame Kwame everywhere and you're like mm. thinking Kwame is such a common name. But basically what they do in West Africa, particularly in Ghana, um, for every day there is a name. So you could be wow. Arnold something, uh, you could be an Arnold Jack, but your second name now becomes Kwame because Kwame identifies that you were born on a Thursday or on a Saturday, whatever the case is. So we never stop learning. Thanks for that education, man. I appreciate that. Who is Willie and uh, where, where does he come from and what does he do? Willie Kalala is a traveler, as you said, but yeah. also he is a uh, property investor. Originally, right. I'm from uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Really? Resi yes, residing in SA for more than, uh, will I say, 18 to 20 years. So I will say I am half South African, half Congolese, because my family right now, my wife, she's South African from the province of KwaZulu-Natal, and I have one beautiful boy. So Man, we, I was... We, we... We've got something in common. Um, <laughs> and uh, my wife is also from KZN. Oh, okay. And I always tease people to say, you know, there was no need for me to import. Uh, Not at all. Yeah, local is lekker. Yes, exactly. As we always say, travel local and local is lekker. So, awesome, awesome. Exactly. Awesome. That's a wheelie, if I can put it that way. Right, right. And I've been to Congo. Uh, Congo Brazzaville, and um, I did some work there in the late mid nineties. Um, and I, the, the company that I was working for, we took a two twenty four tonner of um, uh, what is this thing called? Mopani worms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were sourced out in, in the south of Zimbabwe in Bulueo, and we, uh, they were brought in to a no man's land in, uh, just between Zambia and uh, Congo. And we had a military escort from no man's land all the way to Lumbumbashi. I don't remember the hotel that we stayed in. Actually, and... I'm from Lumbumbashi. Really? I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. And, and whilst we were there, my idea of selling the consignment was that we were going to get there and leave the consignment and come back with the money. 
that's what was in my head. I didn't know that when we get there, we were actually going to be selling off the truck. Wow. And a trip that was supposed to be a four or five days trip ended up to be a three weeks trip because we actually had to wait for the money to come back. Um, but Congo, it's a, it's a different country for me. At the time it was ripe with uh, war, <coughs> but um, uh, things have stabilized now, right? Yes, actually uh, the new president is doing very well. Yeah. And we're hoping, we believe by the end of this year, yeah. there shall never be again war in DRC. It's a beautiful country. Just to come to what we have mentioned yeah. about the Mopani, Mopani Worms. Yeah. I mean, all these years, more than five to seven years, I've been traveling to Zimbabwe. I remember whenever we go to Vic Force, mm -hmm. and there is uh, this buffet that was always organized. Amongst the food, there was Mopani, uh, Mopani Worms. And yeah. shockingly, whenever you eat uh, Mopani Worms, you are given a, a certificate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I have more than seven certificates for each year because yeah. of my traveling. I mean, every year, at least twice or three times, we go to Zim, but uh, yeah. twice to Vic Force. So right. Mopani worms uh, are just one of those um, delicious food, brings more protein in the body. Yes, yes, yes. You, you, exactly. you, you have labeled yourself the traveler. Where have you been? Well, I've been to many countries around. Let me start yeah. with uh, Africa. I've been to right. Nigeria. Yeah. I've been to Kenya. I've been yeah. to Tanzania. Maybe, maybe, let's, maybe let's do this. Start where I have been. Also, I will say tick. And where <laughs> I haven't been, I'll just keep quiet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been to Congo, Brazzaville. Take. I've been to Nigeria. I've been to Tanzania. Take. I've been to Kenya. Take. I've been to Zambia. Take. I've been to Zimbabwe. Take. I've been to Botswana. Take. I've been to Namibia. I've been to Mozambique. Take. I've been to Swaziland. I've been to Lesotho. Take. I've been to France. I've been to Berlin. Where else? I think uh, that's all. <laughs> My man, you, you, and this is just from a continent perspective and locally, uh, exactly. I'm sure you've been to, to other um, short, a lot of short lefts as we call them uh, in and around the country and why travel though? Why, why, why dedicate your life to traveling? Well, uh, TJ, my background is law. I did law in DRC. And when right. I came to SA, uh, by default, then uh, I started working for ShopRite Distribution Center mm -hmm. for three to four years, I think. Then when friends realized that I am now in South Africa. They started calling me and asking if I can be able to arrange accommodation. Now, I will arrange accommodation. I will take them around uh, taking sick leave and <laughs> taking them around. Then yeah. I realized that the money that I'm making for taking them around, because it wasn't for free, even though they are my friends. Yes, yes. I started and, and, making... And, and the guys in Congo, I should also stress the fact that, and I don't know whether it's still the same, but when I was in Congo, I realized something. It's yes, just like me. South Africa where you've got the poor are very poor and the elite Correct. are extremely elite. Correct. You, you are right. And yeah. remember Congo, uh, Angola, I forgot to mention yeah. Angola also. I've been there. Dick, I've been to Angola. Uh, those beautiful are, women in Angola, if I may say so. <laughs> Be careful, maybe your wife is listening. Okay. Oh, my wife, uh, she knows. I, 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 where, where beauty is, I don't, I don't uh, uh, hide around it. Um, my wife knows that, and I tell her all the time. I say to her, 
uh, and I think that's the beauty of also being married with someone who has confidence and who yes. is content with you. Correct. Because then Correct. as a husband or as, an, as the other partner, you can talk about every, anything and everything. Um, There's nothing wrong. I, I, for the fact that I'm I am married, it doesn't mean that I'm blind now. Yes. yes I, I, can, I can still see the, I call it talent, um, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to go for it. And I discuss that with my life. When I see someone, I say, hey, babe, did you see that one? Damn, had I not seen this one before you, maybe I might be there. Um, but you know, those are, those are internal affairs jokes. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. Then uh, I started making more money than going to work because we were just uh, uh, hired, not full time. Then yeah. I discover because I couldn't do, I couldn't practice my law. Okay. Coming from a French country into an English country. These are two different things. Right. So, I decided to enroll for travel management while working. That's how I decided to do travel management. Then by the time I finished, the numbers of people contacting me yeah. to come and visit South Africa was very high. Then wow. I decided to say, well, look, I know very well French people. They are very fussy people. They don't want to speak any other, yes, they don't want to speak any other language. Yeah. So let me create this uh, niche market where I will say our company provide services to French speaking, visiting South Africa, which is an English country. Wow. That's where everything started. Today we are known as the French speaking Whenever there is any email coming from either the National Department of Tourism or the, any provincial tourism speaking French, they will straight forward that email to me. That's yeah. how we have market to network, to be known that we specialize in French market. Then from there, we started attending different exhibitions in the travel industry where we meet now people from different countries. If I've right. been to some of these countries, it's only because those countries, they decided to invite us as Mount Zion Tours and Travel, which is our company, to go and sample, to go and experience their products. I mean, I'm right. talking about uh, the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority. Right. We've become so friend whereby any event in the travel and tourism happening in Zimbabwe, whenever they have to look for tour operators, they have to look for destination management company, our company name is always on the list where you get right. invited, you go around, you go and sample the, the, the product. And whenever we receive requests, remember whenever we receive any requests from overseas, because our market is most overseas, even though time like uh, winter during team, we have uh, African market. But mm -hmm. I would say the big slice of cake comes from overseas. Whenever mm -hmm. they want to visit South Africa, they will ask, I have 12 nights uh, for my holiday. How can yeah. I enjoy? Then we suggest that they visit South Africa, then with extension with another neighboring countries. Yeah. Now, if I have visited uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana, all these neighboring countries. That's when we are going to suggest one of the countries where it can be a two night, three days. Right. Exactly. So travel, it's a business that uh, I've been doing all along until last year when uh, the monster of COVID-19 decided to knock not only at our door, but the whole world. Right, right. That's when now everything has been put on hold, but yeah. uh, traveling, it's one of my passion. I travel, I mean, I, I only discover also during this COVID that it's the first time for more than 15 years I've been at my home with my family, seeing them almost every day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I've traveled to places where sometimes uh, 
Fear have gone out of me. Sure. I've slept in a five-star hotel. I've slept outside under the sun. I've slept right. in, in the booth, in the camp. So that's me. That's the experience I got from traveling. That's a, that's a, that's a priceless experience there, Willie, because I think um, for me, what traveling does for me, it opens up my mind um, to possibilities that I can do. I'll give you an example. I traveled to, uh, to Bloemfontein at one point, and I just saw how the guys were doing student accommodation. And we were not doing student accommodation at the time. When I came back, I called my business partner and I said, my friend, we are missing out. There's something that is called student accommodation. I think let's try to understand it. She was hooked on uh, Reta. And I mean, today we, we are housing just above 300 students in, two, in three cities, which is Cape Town wow. now, Durban and uh, Porch. Um, but, but the thing is that if I had not traveled, I don't think that I would have ever discovered that gem. Exactly. You know? And I think for me, traveling, as I have traveled all the time, um, there's always something that is going to stick with me that I want to bring home, uh, to localize it. And the question that I ask is, how do they do it? And why are we not doing it? Uh, and, and that's been my, my, my journey of traveling. And I do miss traveling as well. Um, so, yeah, but really, I want to ask of you of a question that when you were starting off, you were working for ShopRite at the time. So obviously language was a barrier at the time. Yes. Um, did you, did you, were you already English speaking at the time or you had to learn from start? If I have to tell you this, the, the, the little story about my English, I think you're going to laugh. Yeah. I used to be in, then in DRC, I used to be. Those students, when the English teacher comes in, yeah. I go out. <laughs> because <laughs> because that's this the is French, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> then, then I told myself, what will I do with English? Right. And I remember this poor English teacher will always say, some of you one day, you will remember me. You will see me standing in front of you when you are going to need English. TJ, this was the case, as I mentioned by default. When I enter South Africa, yeah. I saw my English teacher standing in front of me saying, today is the day. Oh, no. Then automatically what I did is I accepted the mistake I did. And right. I told myself, I'm not going to be into the French uh, environment. I speak yeah. already French. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be around people who speak English. Starting right. by, because when I came to Joburg, my elder sister was already here. And she right. had a small child of four or five years. Then I decided watching TV, news, without even listening what was happening. Yeah. I decided reading newspaper. Right. Then my conversation with the small child was uniquely in English. Okay. The English that I'm talking today, I never went to school and sit down and say, Okay, this is how you pronounce. This is how you do. not at all. I just wow. told myself, this is how I'm going to teach myself. I remember when I registered for travel and tourism, my first test was in English. I cried before going because I asked myself, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, this is true. I cried, tears came out. Now you are going to write your test in English. Wow. And when I passed, I got my result. I couldn't believe that what encourages me. And I told myself, if I can succeed, 
mm. learning a foreign langu language, then where does this word impossible comes from? Come on. Because then many of the friends were like, no, you are, you are studying in English. There is nothing. You are going to fail. You know, these negative words coming from left and right. But I yeah. remained focused. That's how I never went to school. But I started referring other people were coming to say, look, don't go my way because I was very courageous. And the other thing is I capitalized on the English behavior, people, people's behavior. Remember yeah. with French, when you don't speak correctly French, I will be mocking you. Yes. Openly. Yes. I, will, yes. I, will, I, will, I will show you <clears throat> my face like, what, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. I will make you feel bad. That's right. how French people are, which is totally different with the English people. Whether you, you, you speak your English like I was broken when I, I, I was, it's not an issue as long as the message can be conveyed. Yeah. As long as you can pass the message. That's the one thing I liked about English. And I tried to do my best to make sure that I can be able to communicate properly. And I always tell people, with a French background, I'm not obliged to speak like an American or like an English person because English is not my language. Right. But my, exactly. So I can speak with my accent either from African continent or any other uh, local languages. I'm proud of it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how I learn uh, English. Uh, that is good, man, because I think a lot of times we never see language as a barrier. Uh, we see a lot of things as barriers, like money, access to this and this. But then when we come to simple things like languages, we are of the assumption that, you know, anyone can converse. Um, but I almost want to, to talk to the point that there you are, you are not good in the English language. You want to do business with people that are English speaking. So naturally your second hurdle is now um, confidence of just speaking because you don't even know how to speak that language. So now how do you do business with people when the language is not even there? You know, a lot of people think that maybe if they don't know the lingo, that's already for you, that was problem number three. You know, problem number one was just to understand the language. And then problem number two is being confident in that language now for you to be able to do business. And uh, that you have already overcome in, in these last 20 odd years that you've been in the country. And uh, I mean, you've got a business and um, neighboring countries rely on you, on your expertise to bring in business to their countries um, countries, I know Lesotho, they're quite big on the French people and the English people coming to them. Yes. So is Swaziland, so is Zimbabwe, Swaziland, yes, exactly. so is Botswana, um, Mozambique, I'm not so sure. Not much. Right. Because they are Portuguese speaking, so they potentially rely on their Portuguese um, uh, countries to give them more traffic there. If you don't mind that you have touched uh, Mozambique, Mm. Let me give you an indication of uh, when I was still working at uh, ShopRite. Yeah. A friend of mine came and said, I'm just coming from Mozambique, Maputo. Last week I was not at work. This is what I discovered. Mm. You see the takeaway papers? Yeah. You put food? Yeah. He says, I've just made a kill in Maputo. I was like, hey, are you sure? He says, I've just make, made a kill. Then I decided to introduce a sick leave. Then it was time for me to go around, purchase all those um, stuff. Mm. The next morning, I was on Intercape into Maputo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Without knowing any word except Bondia, Bondia, Komusta, Estaben Obligado. 
yeah, yeah. Those are the only words I knew. But I decided, I said, look, if there is business opportunity in Maputo, language will never be a barrier to me. I got into Maputo, I was in. Now, mm. languages. You know what? From the hotel, I ask. Now, whatever I was told is not true because I'm on the ground now. When I ask around, they say, no, already the market has been saturated around here. There's no way that with that price, you are going to make anything unless you go another 45 to 60 kilometers out of Maputo. I looked already because I only took three days. Right. So I was supposed to be back. Then I decided, look, how can I get there? They told me where I can get uh, transport. I was into the transport. I just asked, how much is it? I make sure that I got the money that I'm supposed to pay. No change. The correct money. And yeah. I know the place where, I, because it was a big market. I got into the, 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 the public transport. Then I was dropped at the place. When I arrived there, guess now who were my, my, my buyers? Chinese. Oh, I saw Chinese. I said, well, if they are Chinese, they can speak English. Sure. What a huge disappointment. When I <laughs> approach them, Chinese, <laughs> they, Chinese speak Portuguese. Way, they speak Portuguese. Oh, no. <laughs> then I say, look, I'm already here. The guys are interested into my product. Yeah. Guess what? It was an issue now of calculator. I put the amount. I show them. They say, hmm. They put the amount, they show me. I said, hmm. They put, I put my amount, I show them, hmm. Until when <laughs> we agree. <laughs> and the deal was done. Not even wow. speaking one language, but just the aid to say, I agree, I don't agree. I agree, I don't agree. And yeah. that was how I have to do my business. I was back at the, off, uh, at the hotel and the following day, back in SA. Well, I want to touch on, on something here. <clears throat> and um, I, I almost want to say that living in South Africa is, it gives you a bit of comfort um, of your surroundings. You kind of like know where the income is coming from. But what you have just described I have seen it so much in Africa where guys hear of an opportunity and shoot, they get up and they chase for that opportunity. There is no due diligence around it. There is no, will it, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Mm. They have the gut feel that it's going to work. They go and jump and then they do it. And that's a survival instinct behavior. Uh, where you know that I'm going to make it work. I don't know how, but I'm going to make it work. And I had that spirit at one point, you know, in my early 20s. And I think going to work and getting that salary coming in every month, the spirit died at the point. Mm. Until I started resonating up and I was asking the question to say, how much more do I want to put on my table uh, for my family? And I realized that I was now deep in comfort, mm -hmm. like very, very deep in comfort. And I looked back and I said, I've been to Congo. I've been to Namibia. I was selling stuff. I was making, right. I was taking risk. I was doing this. Um, I've sold Forex before. I've done mm -hmm. many, many entrepreneurial things that I've done. And all of this has died within the last five to 10 years. And I've become a paper pusher in the, in the workplace. And by the way, nothing wrong with paper, uh, paper pushing in the workplace. But is that what really your heart desires? And I picked up my soul at that time and I was like, no, this is not me. Because this year is going to give me a job until I'm 60 or 65. And for the rest of my life, I'm going to have a pension somewhere. And I started looking at my own parents at that time, Willie. Mm. 
And I started looking at how much they were getting as a pension, $5. And I said to myself, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't want to be another statistic of $5. Correct. In South Africa, Sasa gives people what, 1,500, uh, those that are elderly. Mm. Uh, is that enough? It's not enough to be doing anything, you know? Um, and I started looking for other opportunities. Well, how best can I do it? And today you have done that. Now you have created a business and this business is, uh, we, we can sell it. It's, we can safely say that it is the gateway of the French speaking community into Africa. That's what we can say. Correct. Now, what do you do in property? So this is the business that's facilitated the French speaking people, but yes. I know you playing heavily in property. So is this related somehow or it's not at all? I would say there is some link right. between uh, the travel and the property. Because mm -hmm. what uh, happened is later on, when I decided to have a family, yeah. we bought uh, a flat mm -hmm. with three bedrooms. Those old flats where you found the lounge can be divided in two or three bedrooms, including yeah. the balcony. I think you, yeah. you know yeah. those type of yes, exactly. I love those and, ones. That's my yes. cornerstone of my business. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So then when it comes to booking, remember through travel, I created a network of people who have got guest houses. People who right. have got properties, you know, they, 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 they come and advertise to you so that when clients are looking for a place to, to stay, you are the first contact. And if I know that TJ has got a guest house, then definitely I will make sure that I book my guest at TJ's guest house. Right. Then from, from, from there, when we moved from our our apartment, I decided to use it now for rentals, put tenant. Okay. Yes, decided to put tenant. But before, before me with property in SA, just to give you an idea back home, we had a very huge stand where mm -hmm. I grew up, where back I was born. Yeah. Back in Congo, yes. So <clears throat> yeah. what happened is we had... I mean, I'm coming from a family of 13 people. One mother, one father. 18. One, three, yes. Sure. And, and you are number all of us, five. Excuse me? You are number five. Yes. So one passed away. What yeah. happened is my father had to build a huge house. Mm. Then when all of us decided to move out because we have scattered all over the world. Yeah. My mother now is at home. Then we decided, when my, my father passed away, they decided to build a church. Actually, it was the pastor who approached them and said, look, your plot is at the prime location where I would love my church to be. Right. Can I build a church in your premises? We agree on the contract after four or five years, then the building belongs to you. Then the right. mother con contacted us. We agree and said, look, you are not losing anything. Let the pastor build the church. Then after that, the contract, everything, how much is spent, then the building will remain to us. After the lease agreement, the agreement uh, was expired, then we realized the money, the rent, the rental that the pastor was paying is far less if we can convert the church into a storage. Okay. Look, looking again at the location, because we knew very well that people who have got storage are making far more money than the church. Right. That's how we decided to convert the church into a storage. And we decided also to add some back rooms. Mm. So that's where actually the idea of property started. Then when 
coming now to, to, to SA, as I mentioned, from uh, one flat, then decided, okay, what's the next movement? Again, having uh, friends who are client coming from DRC, they might not all afford to, 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 to stay in a hotel, whether it's in Santon or around, but they just want uh, a place to sleep. Yeah. You know? I mean, I remember when I traveled to Namibia for the first time, I go to a place where I met almost the whole Africa at that house. Yeah. Because they just come there to sleep, but they are coming to buy stuff. Some they are in transit. So we, we, we decided to create something where at least it can accommodate those ones who like privacy. But at yeah, the same yeah. time, those ones who are just looking for a place to, to, to sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's where actually, when, when I realized that, uh, look, Africa, we are blessed. We are not in a, content, a, a continent where we have natural disaster, like earthquake. Mm. So if today I decide to buy a property, this is an investment that I can be able to do. And it's not like a car when you buy it now 250, just by coming out of the car dealers, it has lost value. No, property actually, there is always value. Every, I will say from the time you build it, well looked, there is value mm -hmm. that you are adding to the property. <clears throat> Right. So th that's the background of me having at least uh, an idea of, I mean, when, when it's come to property. Mm. That, that, that's quite interesting, uh, uh, Willie. And, um, and uh, I know that you do Airbnb. Um, and I have spoken to people before and I've said to people, with Airbnb, you don't need to own the properties. Uh, you can start Airbnb without even any of your own properties and you can make money out of it. Yes. You sound to me like you are at the pinnacle of that because you have lots of traffic that's coming through from people. You know when they are coming, you know how long they're going to be staying here. So you can actually prepare for it here by going through to rent a few properties. You turn them into Airbnb. Is this something that you do or something that you have thought of doing in the Airbnb? What, what do you do in Airbnb? Well, in Airbnb, yeah. so short-term rentals, I am a host and right. I am also a co-host. Okay. What's the difference so, between the two? The difference is when I say I am a host, it means mm -hmm. I have my own property, right. which I have listed it on Airbnb and people pay me for coming and sleeping. Right. That's me being a host. When okay. I say I am a co-host, it means, TJ, you have your own property, which is finished. Mm -hmm. Then you decide to contact me or I contact you and say, TJ, the property that you are having, sometimes, actually, uh, I've seen a rise of uh, property owners deciding now to move from having one tenant the conventional way into Airbnb because of what we have seen uh, concerning COVID. So yeah. a course now is me, I'm taking, I'm doing the management of your property mm -hmm. from advising on a professional photography, doing the listing, yeah. communicating with the guest, Screening yeah. the guest, making sure that your listing always stands in front on the first page whenever someone is looking for a place to stay in your area. Then now I am a co-host which comes with a certain fees that right. now we uh, request from every confirmed booking. So on Airbnb short-term rentals, I am a host. And at the same time, I am a co-host. Mm. Which puts you in a very good position because uh, you do have traffic already from your communities. And uh, as I know, 
uh, a lot of the European guys, once they like a certain place, they book this year, and the next year they book again. And, right. and so it goes on for the next couple of years. So you can almost see the schedule for some people, not unless you know life changes uh, like we have seen in COVID. Um, but you have religious holiday makers that come in. Now, Will, I want to speak to you about something else that's a little bit different from what you do in the business. You are married to a South African, you are French speaking. Um, how do you balance the relations of your culture versus her culture to create your new culture of this home in, in your relationship as a husband and wife and in doing the business? Because uh, doing business, suppose it's French speaking, you might, there are certain things that you can do and your wife might totally not understand that and she'll say, why are you doing that? Uh, and yet it comes very natural to you. I agree with you, TJ, and uh, I like what you mentioned, how you decided to describe you or your relationship with your wife. Mm. Me being into a travel industry, when I met my wife, yes, actually it was uh, to our church, but for me first to choose her, it, I look back about the culture where she comes from, it's like almost if I was back, this is the tribe that I was going to choose okay. to the wife. There were yeah. some similarity. Mm -hmm. Then I decided, okay, this is where I'm going to build my castle. Then the next thing now was me as a French person, how first to understand the English culture. Right. Because remember, as a husband, you are the aide. So you are the mm -hmm. ones who be leading. Right. I try my best. Even now, I'm still learning about it. But I think the other part that facilitated the things to go smoothly, it was because we were both fellowshipping together. Good. Yeah. Exactly. So there, so there was a common ground. Yes, there was a common ground. And yeah. we were all drinking from the same source. Sure. And whatever that was given to us, it was not, this is for this culture, this is for this culture. Mm -hmm. I remember in, in, our, in our household we call it the Jesus culture. We we don't have ah, any exactly. other culture besides the Jesus culture in our house. There you go, exactly. The Jesus, the Jesus class culture. It yeah. helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember traveling, you know, traveling, you are getting exposed to everything. But mm -hmm. knowing who you are, that what will make you stand. Right. My wife at one time, I remember, she was now sharing with me as they were, because she's in a corporate. Yeah. Now a friend were like, are you not jealous to see your husband traveling all over? And sometimes if you look at my profile, you will see me in my travel industry. I am cool with everyone. Yeah, yeah. I know my boundaries. I yeah. know how far I can go. So mm -hmm. it nearly creates some insecurity. Mm -hmm. But knowing yourself and trusting who the husband is, mm -hmm. you told them, said, look, there's nothing. There yeah. is nothing that just work. Because mm -hmm. as long as you go for work and you come, there is no time whereby now when you have to answer your phone, you go to the bathroom, you take your phone in your pocket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there's no such. A phone is there, the phone rings, and you, you understand. Yeah. So th th that's uh, actually, I will say, I'm the one also who created that environment to say, look, this is work. And when yeah. I'm home, I'm home. Everything is simple, is clear, and you, you know what I'm saying. So, and also, whenever we have to travel for holiday as a family. Yeah. I make sure that I used 
the place where I went. Okay. Actually, I, I always tell them, me going with you as a family on holiday, to me, it's, it's not holiday. It's also work. Sure. And this, this now takes me to the point whereby even if I go for holiday, even if I go for work, I have this eye open for property business. Sure. I create that network, yes. Yeah, that's I amazing. get their contact, uh, I, I introduce myself. Yeah. And <clears throat> if there's any need, as you have mentioned also, when I have guests wanting to, some of the guests, they will know the area where they want to stay. But some yeah. of them, they totally rely on you because you are an expert. You are yeah. an advisor. You are mm -hmm. a professional in the travel. Then yeah. you can look and say, okay, how much can this guest afford? Is it a three-star mm -hmm. hotel? Is it a four-star? Is it a five-star, a lodge, or a guest house? Or they just want an apartment? Mm. Or an Airbnb for that. Or region. Airbnb. Actually, let me say something, uh, TJ, about Airbnb. Mm. I know in South Africa, Airbnb is not known, well known as overseas. No wonder I'm getting these days almost messages whereby when you mention Airbnb in something, a person have to pay, for example, 700, they are shocked. Yeah. Then when I ask for the question and say, okay, what were you expecting? They say, no, I was expecting 300. What does it mean? It means in South Africa, people are still considering Airbnb like a cheap place to stay, right. which is not totally true. If you go to Airbnb, you are going to find what they call Airbnb Plus. Right. These are well decorated houses who are even used for movie shooting. Okay. Yes, you are going to find villas. You are going to find lodges that yeah. are well decorated. Now, how yeah. do you expect such place to have a place to have a rate which is very low? So mm. those are the things that we are trying to educate people in, especially in South Africa, to say Airbnb does not mean cheap. Right. I mean, my, my father told me, my, my, my son, don't ever buy or go for anything cheap because anything cheap, you are going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are going to pour more money out. <laughs> Willie, you've been in business now for, for a while and... Um, I am sure that when you started off your business um, in the different facets now it has become, um, what are some of the benefits that you are seeing now or realizing seeing to say, when I started off, I was thinking that this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And those were very futuristic things for you. And today you can actually touch and feel it and you can like say, this is where I am today in terms of my benefits. What are those benefits? The benefit I can say is everything started with a dream. Right. If you have a dream, mm -hmm. what, what will I say? What is a dream? Picture it. Yeah. I, I like the, adv the example I always tell people, and you will agree with me. Whenever a developer want to build a four, five stories mansion. They yeah. put a billboard. They tell you, they show you the finished work before they started. Right. Same apply. And, and that's what we buy into. Exactly. Yeah, Same yeah. apply <clears throat> a dream. If you can picture it, yeah. then there is nothing that can stop me from achieving it. Good, good. If you cannot picture it, then you are going to venture, you start in travel. When travel is not working somewhere, you find yourself now in hardware. When yeah. hardware is not working, you find yourself in shoes. Way. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bitcoin. not saying, yes, Bitcoin, yes. 
yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but if you can picture it, then you can endure the time, the obstacle mm -hmm. that you are going to face. Because that picture will be your roadmap. Yeah. I mean, and also I will say, the minute you have a blueprint, mm -hmm. then you know very well. My spiritual father always says, if whatever you are doing, you don't find any obstacle, you don't find anything that is blocking you, it means you and Satan, you are working together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. that, that, that one is a deep one. Uh, it's exactly. a deep one. Uh, yes. So if we need to go to church. On <laughs> if you find objections, if you find obstacle, mm. I mean, he always says, as a businessman, when you have breakfast, is obstacle issues, then what will be your lunch and your dinner? So these obstacles, the failure, they are not failure if you have learned from it, unless right. if you decide to build a monument and start celebrating. The image that I was having about uh, business, uh, when you start mm. seeing, I'm gonna give you an example. 2006, seven, I went around the uh, Gandhi Square yeah. I say, Lord, I'm looking for an office. I didn't know, but I said, my office, I want it to be around here. Mm. Two years later, I got a lease, two streets behind Gandhi Square. Wow. What does, what does it mean? I spoke. I saw myself going to that office. And guess what? As I'm dressing like this smart, mm. I dressed like this the first day I got the key, going to the office, there was no furniture. My wife laughed at me. I, I put my necktie a suit. I mm. took my laptop. I went to the office to get the key. Mm -hmm. I sat on the floor and I said, this is what I prayed for two years ago. I had the opportunity. Some friend took me to Bramfontein. I went there. I saw something, but within me, I said, no, but I remember. I wanted my office to be at Gandhi Square. So what I'm trying to say is the small idea that you had, when you start seeing it coming true, coming to pass, you wanted to own a fleet. You saw your, I saw myself branding our fleet in French, telling the people we are offering excursions in French. When I saw the fleet, I said, wow, this is what I've been thinking. So these small things coming to pass realization, that what makes you say, oh, okay, I am on the right trip. Yes, it doesn't matter how long it takes. You went to the bank. I remember I was turned down. I was told, no, you are not qualifying. Mm -hmm. But a few months later, I got not a friend. I call this person an angel. I don't know him. We met at the Department of uh, Transport. Then he told me, no, I have a connection where you can get uh, quantum. I say, I'm yeah. sure. What I was looking for a year, 12 months to get uh, finance for the fleet, it took me three months. I got a fleet. Wow. That's how sometimes, uh, you know, but your, your desire to see yourself achieving, your desire to see yourself where you want to be, Actually, when people start celebrating, I always tell people, whenever you see me receiving any award or being celebrated for whatever achievement, when you are congratulating me, I'm no longer there. Because 
I saw this coming before. Come on. Yes. I saw yeah. this coming before. Then what next? Yeah, what's next? Exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing, really. Um, well, if you if you were to give advice to your younger self in the early 20s, with what you now know now today, yes, what would you give that advice? What would be that advice? My advice would be patience first. Be patient. Because I've seen met so many young people today, they have put a time frame I need to yeah. achieve in two years. Yeah. And TJ, I started this business from an internet cafe. I mean, I'm talking about 2006. Before even getting my Blueberry phone, which was my first office. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you go into an internet cafe, by the time you're about to send a quotation, your five, your 30 minutes has expired. Right. You, you get my point, but I did not give up. I mm. saw myself having an office, then it, it came to pass. So for the young people, what I can advise is be patient. First of all, have a dream. Yeah. Remain focused. Yes, there will be time of shaking, moment to test your dream. Is your dream something that you can die for? I always tell my wife, I can die for my dream. I'm ready yeah. to die for my dream. Mm. The but mission this, is strong. Yes, the mission is strong. It has to be strong. Exactly. Mm. So even her, she knows very well when it comes to anything related to the dream of this man, this man is ready to die for it. Have something that you can die for. Because the minute you have that, you are going to endure anything. You are going to persevere. I mean, I remember walking to my office. I, I, I was feeling very happy. I did not see anything. I mean, I had friends already that time, some of them were driving, you know. But to me, I knew my time was not bound to anything. Because you find today, people, they just want to achieve. Anyhow, they just want to achieve. But if you are not ready to pay the price, then anyone can come and tell you, hey, there is another business here. I mean, I've got friends, I saw them. There is, there is another opportunity. And also, I remember I decided now to acquire more knowledge in the right. field. Yes, in the field where I am. If we are called today, I mean, uh, expert in the French market or even what I'm doing with Airbnb, it's because each and every day I make sure that whether I read, whether I go on uh, YouTube, whether I go to live uh, uh, session. Yeah. So knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is power. That's 100%. the advice I can, I, I can give to the young people. Yeah, that, that, that is amazing. My, my, my mentor, my, my current mentor now, he says to me, TJ, anyone can walk on a glass road of one kilometer for as long as the price is right. Correct. Um, and if you're not walking on glass to get onto the other side, the price is not good. It's, not it's one course. million. Yes. So you're comfortable. If there's one billion, we can all walk on glass. Yes. And, and we'll get there. Definitely. Um, so I think that speaks to the dream, that speaks to the mission, that speaks to the price. And uh, I'm glad that you have, you have, you have uh, highlighted this. Willie, in closing, my question to you is, um, what is success for you? What, 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 what is success? What does very it look like? Question. Yes, very, very good question. To me, I describe uh, success mm. 
when anything that uh, I have achieved can benefit someone else. Good. I describe uh, success if I am able to assist the community. Mm. Any person in my surrounding or any person who can benefit from whatever that I have achieved today, I will call it success. The minute I started impacting other people's life, yeah. I will call it success. You cannot uh, quantify it. You cannot uh, put it in a box. But as I said, when whatever ach ach achievement that comes uh, from me, other people can be able to benefit or change their life, to me, I will say that's success. Wow. I, I, think, I think that closes all. Um, I think at this time, I just want to say merci beaucoup. Um, merci à moi de vous remercier. <laughs> th th thank you for your time. Um, and um, look, it, it's amazing how, how distant we are as, as people and how close our lives are so parallel to each other. And as you spoke, you know, we, we, we have met in events and things like that, but we've never had like a conversation, conversation like this. Got it. And our lives are so similar, it's not even funny. Mm. You know? Um, and I think if people could get that, 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 that we're just all just human beings, and we are potentially are living in parallel lines. We can just be able to help either just sharing each other's stories to help the other person mm -hmm. or to just be able to connect to the other person to create value for them. I think our communities will be a better community. Definitely, I agree with you. Sharing yeah. my experience, learning from you that what can make one person better. Yeah, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Willie and Willie, the fifth born. So that's why they call him <laughs> Willie Kalala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, am, I cannot say that because I am the only child of my parents and um, uh, there's no one before me, there's no one uh, after me. Uh, so I don't know. What would you call me? Kala? No, 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 no. Yeah. There is uh, a name of right. this kid that uh, they don't allow others to follow to come after them. I just forgot. <laughs> now you're making it sound like it's my fault. <laughs> no, it's not my fault. They didn't want to engage. <laughs> no. <coughs> Sorry. There is yeah. a name for that, but uh, I just forgot. Anyway, as you mentioned, it's not, uh, it's not your fault. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. the one who gives is the one who decides. The one who, I mean, our lives are not in our own hands. Sure. There is someone who decides before even you were born. So nothing, but I believe now you are making sure that uh, you are creating a big family. Uh, not not as big as where you come from. Uh, <laughs> I've said I've said to the Lord, two is enough. <laughs> oh, okay. I have one, and I've been criticized yeah. left and right and left to say no, no. I'm I'm selfish. I say, look, I remember when growing up, yeah. my father took me to a shop, and I wanted a certain pair of shoes, right. which on, on that time it was the shoe that uh, every boy teenager supposed to wear. When we yeah. arrive in the shop, I rushed to that pair of shoes. He looked at the shoe and he said to me, you are not the only one. Oh. So we need to take something below. Right. And this to is something that there. happened. Yes. This is something that happened years, but I still remember. So I don't want yeah. my child, my kid also to go the same thing, but somewhere, yeah. somehow, what can we do? <laughs> Amazing stuff. 
Exactly. Willie, thanks a lot for having uh, having us and uh, sharing your story with with, with us. Um, I think personally, many are things that I've learned from your journey, um, and I can reflect. I can start. The one thing that you have now just resonate that has resonated with me again, having to speak to you, is the fire in my belly still burning? Correct. Right. Um, you know, uh, you you reminded me that you can go to a to an unknown place and you can do business. You reminded yes. me of that. Um, <laughs> you reminded me the fact that you don't have to know everything, and business is about survival. And you can survive it uh, if you're just putting in the rightful places. So you've reignited fire in my belly today. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Willie Kalala and um, the Traveler. We will see you on the next video. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.